Hello everyone, today I would like to show you how we can include some color sensing ability to our Arduino projects using the TCS3200 color sensor which is a light to frequency converter so before we can show you how the sensor works with Arduino let me have a closer look at the sensor itself so of course this sensor is not very breadboard friendly that's why I used to have some personal soldering done, although I think I did do it very well. I was supposed to put these leads behind so that the sensor can be facing in front, but it's okay. Okay, so from here, we can see the main components. The major component is this middle IC here, which is the TC3200 sensor chip itself. And this contains an array of 8x8 photodiodes and these photodiodes have 16 photodiodes with blue filters that is those diodes are sensitive to the blue color then there are some 16 photodiodes that are green filters 16 others are red filters and then 16 filters 16 photodiodes have no filters in other words they will just be clear and then we have these leds Remember, this is a color sensor and it is using light to frequency conversion. So, in other words, you have to first illuminate the object that you are going to be sensing. So, the purpose of these LEDs is to illuminate the object whose color I want to detect. So, from here, I'll talk something about these output and input pins. Of course, the first one here is S0. So, this is S0 and S1 go in pairs and s2 and s3 also are in pair so s1 s0 and s1 are the output frequency scaling inputs usually in the arduino usually use a frequency scaling of 20 percent and that depends on the level of the logic or the logic level of these two pins here then this is the output enable pin usually it is active low therefore it is already connected with the ground so there's no need of wiring up this pin because these two pins are connected so you only have to connect the ground pin okay then this side we have the s2 and s3 pins those are for selection of the photodiodes and of course these ones enable us to select either red green blue all a clear color depending on the logic level of these pins as will be seen in the programming and this is the output frequency and this is the voltage so in this case we're going to be using a voltage of 5 volts before we can be able to use this color sensor in any project we need to do some kind of calibration so that we can be able to know the frequency ranges for the different color filters that we have and that is done using the Arduino and the serial monitor. So what we do, we simply connect the color sensor to the Arduino board as shown here. I'll put the description with the links to the schematics and the code. Then as you can see here, we connect the S0 to pin 4, S1, pin 5, S2, pin 6, S3, pin 7, then the out frequency is going to go to pin 8. Then of course we have the VCC going to the VCC. And the ground goes to the ground. Then from there we can be able to upload our calibration code. And we see the frequency ranges on the serial monitor. So this is the code we are going to be using to calibrate our color sensor. So... It's very simple, you only have to define the pins, the S0 up to S3, and then the sensor out pin where they're connected to the Arduino. And then uh, from here, we just upload this code onto your Arduino and you open the serial monitor. So, of course, I'm going to put a description below with a link to where you can find this code. So, we are going to upload it to our Arduino and we check on the serial monitor to see what happens. 
So now we have uploaded the code. So we open our serial monitor. So as you can see, the serial monitor gives us the frequencies of the various colors. This is red, green, and blue. So if you want to calibrate our sensor, we choose any color. For example, we can use a blue object. So if you put a blue object near the sensor, you are going to observe the values of blue getting lower compared to values for other colors. So in this case, we take note of the colors or the values of the blue. Take note of those values and maybe get somewhere where you are going to write them down so that you can be able to know how we are going to be using these values or the, the biggest value and the smallest value so that when you are going to be using them in a any other project you can be able to recall the values let's now have a simple demonstration of how we can use this color sensor to be able to show the color of an object placed in front of it on an LCD so we are just going to have our color sensor here and then we have an LCD screen where we are going to be showing the color of the object that you have placed in front of the sensor so let me upload the code i'll put a link in the description below so that you can be able to see how i've done the connections and the code itself so let me upload the code and see how this works so the code is now uploaded and as you can see the led is for the sensor lighting and here we just see no color is detected because there's no object in front here so if you can place some simple object in front of the sensor, then we shall see what happens on the LCD. Let me place my simple handbook here, which is blue. So you place it here, you're going to see blue color detected. Yeah. You can even use some phone applications. There are some phone applications which can show you RGB colors. For example, I have here, this is my blue phone, if I put here, it will show you blue color detected. There is one thing I want to talk about, one problem you are going to find with this sensor, is that the sensor is affected by the lighting of the surrounding. So sometimes if you have a lot of light around the sensor, you may not be able to get the correct readings because of that interference from the environmental light that's why some sensors have been designed with kind of a, a screen around the leds all in this case what you can do you can include a, black or a dark screen around the led so that you can be able to focus all the light from the sensor onto the object that you want to identify in that case you can be able to block out that are interfering light from the surrounding so that can affect even for example if you're using a phone remember a phone usually uses has its own light from the screen for example now if i i have the red color here and i put in front of you you may find that it's it's not going to work it will be like the color will not be detected very well because of that light interference from the phone yeah so let me see the green color if i use green from the phone and i put here yeah the green is detected but still you see it's not very accurate maybe if i reduce on the lighting of the room let me first reduce the lighting so if i reduce the lighting then there you can be able to see so i think you can see what i'm talking about and that's because i don't have a screen around my leds for the sensor so to overcome this problem you either have to reduce on the interfering light from the environment around or you include a simple screen around the leds on the sensor so that you can be able to focus all the light onto the object that you're reading so this is a blue object it's being detected Even if i increase the light a bit i think it's okay Yeah, for the blue, I think can easily be detected, but for 
green and red you need more focusing of the light onto the object so that's it for today hope you have enjoyed the tutorial don't forget to subscribe and to like my videos thanks for watching